everybody welcome back to the shave den today is going to be another shave america video on the state of south carolina you heard the state song called carolina in the opening in fact this state had a few different state songs and in the outro of the video you're going to hear a different one which is a more peppier upbeat jazzy song in fact i think it's pretty cool to listen all by itself so i hope you enjoy that one but let's talk about the state of south carolina it was named after King Charles the first. The Carolina part of SC comes from the Latin word Carolinus, which means of Charles. Now the state flag that we saw in the opening features a white palmetto tree on an indigo background. The palmetto was added in 1861 to the existing white crescent of the original 1775 version as a tribute to Colonel William Moultrie's 1776 defense of a palmetto log fort against a British attack. The crescent is a reproduction of a silver emblem worn on the caps of the Revolutionary War soldiers. Here's a pic of the soldiers and you can look at the cap and see the crescent. Now, South Carolina is chock full of Civil War history. Fort Sumter at Charleston Harbor is best known as the site upon which the shots that started the American Civil War were fired at the Battle of Fort Sumter on April 12th, 1861. Now, South Carolina was also the first state to secede from the Union in 1860. Afterwards, the state printed its own money and created its own postage stamps. There were many printed versions, but here is a pic of a $5 bill from the official State Bank of South Carolina. Now that bill was called the sweet potato, since the picture depicts a breakfast scene of sweet potatoes roasting in the fire. <laughs> So that is the opening of our South Carolina state shave. The scents for this state are simple. Grapefruit, that's it. So I picked to go with Katie's Bubbles Purple Grapefruit. And if you haven't scent, smelled this, it's, it's fantastic. You get the sense of grapefruit and there's an undertone of lavender in there. It's fantastic, I love this scent. Now Tob's Grapefruit is really good too. I almost went with that one but I wanted to use the Katie's Bubbles. I took a shower, did my hair, and I actually used some Nivea for Men Deep Cleansing Face Scrub. So I'm all hydrated, no pre-shave oil. That adds slickness, if you don't know, if you use it before a shave. So we're gonna give this a try for the first time. I love the scrub. It made me feel nice and refreshed and clean. So we're gonna see how that works on our razor, which is the West Coast Shaving. Uh, I'll turn it at the bottom there, West Coast Shaving. And this is the 3D wrapped razor. And inside, we're gonna use on its second use, a Bluebird blade. And for the brush, we're gonna use the Sangrata Familia. And this is the uh, Yaki 24 millimeter brush. This is a synthetic. So we're just gonna put that in some water to soak. And for the post shave, we are going to put some Thayer's Lavender on, just because we have a lavender-based soap. We're gonna use some more Nivea Men Cream for the face. And then we're gonna to top it off with some flowery scents of Pinaud Lilac Vegetal. So let me get all set up here, and we'll get to the shave. All right, I'm trying to save some time for you guys because these tend to run a little bit longer. So I cut back on a few of the actual tidbits of information for the state that I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna see how this works. We are just doing a brush load right inside the Katie's Bubbles jar on the Singrata Familia, and we're gonna do a face lather today. So we have a good load of soap, I would think. There we are. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of warm water on the face and go for a face lather. Hope everybody's doing well. Good news is that New York State actually has moved into phase one of the reopen process from the COVID-19 crisis. 
the state governor actually had listed seven criteria that the state had to meet, or I should say the regions in the state had to meet, in order to reopen. Originally, it was thought that our western New York region was going to have to stay closed for another few weeks until June 1st, uh, because we were only meeting five of the seven criteria. Well, lo and behold, there was uh, good movement in one, where we had to have a number of tracers in place, and we had surpassed the required minimum. I think it was 521, and we have 525 tracers. So that was a pleasant uh, surprise. And then a few days later, the state actually changed one of the criteria. Uh, instead of a steady decline on a daily uh, process, they actually changed it to be uh, like a three-day average. So because they made that change, we actually met the final criteria. I'm just going to use my sprayer. Oh, there's no... Got to pump it up. So because they changed that um, last bit of information, we're able to meet the last criteria. So effective earlier in the week, well by the time you see this video it would have been earlier in the week, uh, we actually had entered phase one of reopen. Now there was some speculation of what phase one was, but it was um, construction work, manufacturing, those sorts of things. Some businesses, smaller businesses that weren't critical, uh, were given the green light, but every business that wants to reopen has to have a plan in place, and they have to have masks available for their employees, and they still have to follow the social distancing criteria. All right, so let's get to pass one using the 3D wrapped razor and our Bluebird blade. I like this razor. The handle is pretty hefty too. And even the bottom of the head, everything is wrapped in this design. So, And it's not an aggressive head. It's pretty mild compared to uh, some heads. So I actually enjoy shaving with it. In fact, the Bluebird blade did well its first time out. But I digress. I was talking about the reopen. So it's good to know that uh, we've actually plateaued for a, fr a few videos. I had reported we were trending in the wrong direction, which was true. We were going up when the rest of the state was stable or sort of coming down with their hospitalization numbers and number of deaths, etc. So we have actually plateaued and we are showing a beginning of a decline as it relates to those metrics which is all good news and it couldn't have come at a better time because the weather here is really starting to be spring summer weather starting Monday we had 60 degrees, upper 60s. Tuesday was just about at 70. I'm filming on Wednesday, which is today. We are at uh, low 70s and we're supposed to stay at that temperature for the next several days. And by the weekend, they're calling for uh, 80s. So spring is definitely here and we're starting to break into summer. Okay, so we have some extra. I'm just going to reapply. I took it off of the uh, goatee so I can actually see the lines. I'm just going to put the second coat on for another pass. I had a, a slight delay in uh, starting my job. You know, being remote, not everybody's in the office, and sometimes things delay a little bit, but uh, nonetheless, things are moving, so 
I'm actually going to start just after the holiday. Memorial Day. You guys have any plans? You guys doing any cookouts uh, for the family? I know we, we really can't do the, the big party thing because of the COVID stuff, but... Oh, man. I love the scent of this soap. Grapefruit. Who ever thought shaving with a fruit would have been nice, but... I mean, the lather's fantastic. Okay. Let's give you some more facts on South Carolina. So the first opera was performed in Charleston in 1735. The opera performed was the comic ballad opera called Flora. Now, there was an entry that said uh, New Orleans was the area that the opera first started. Maybe it was the first opera house that was built or that could have been New York. There was a little bit of controversy, but I did confirm that the first pl opera play was actually done in Charleston of South Carolina. Now, the folks across the pond in Europe are going to get a kick out of this one. <laughs> so, shag dancing is the official South Carolina state dance. Shag is a descendant of the jitterbug um, in the dance family tree. Residents do their shagging Monday through Saturday because it is illegal for dance halls to operate on Sundays in South Carolina. So, if you guys want to do any shagging, you got to do it during the week. <laughs> we all know tales of the Loch Ness Monster, and we all have heard Glen Haley's Sea Monster, but South Carolina's Lake Murray reportedly has its very own water monster known as Messy. Sightings have been frequent enough for South Carolina Fish and Wildlife Department to start a file to keep track of the spottings. Now, there are no official pics that have been submitted of Messy, but there has been investigations and reports and uh, people who have actually witnessed something to give a statement that there is some sort of sea monster in Lake Murray. So if you ever visit that place of South Carolina, let me know in the comments. I'd like to see a pic if you have one too. All right, let's roll the second pass. So now that the weather is breaking, we have a good stretch of weather. I might actually be able to get out, ride the motorcycle. Some golf courses have opened in the area. You know, you have to practice social distancing, but... Usually you're socially distanced anyway. I play military golf. If you don't know what that is, you hit the ball and you go left. You hit the ball and you go right. And then you go left again. So it's left, right, left, right. That's military golf. <laughs> I'm not that bad. I started probably four or five years ago. And I was a triple bogey player. I was just learning. Played baseball for a number of years. So, you know, I had the train my body to swing the club differently than you would swing a baseball bat. And then probably a couple years ago, I saw an improvement in my game. I took some, uh, some simple pro teacher lessons. They were running a special at the local indoor golf dome. It was a four week course where you you signed up and once a week for four weeks you go in and you practice your drive, you practice your pitching, you practice putting, and they had a little sand pit in there, you'd practice hitting out of the sand. So I actually saw an improvement in my game and I went from a triple bogey player to, uh, to a double bogey player. And it started to be uh, consistent. So I was very happy with where my game was going. And I'm never going to be a professional or anything like that, so I just enjoy playing the game, getting out into nature, having a few brews with the folks that I play with. It doesn't always have to be family or friends. I've been partnered up with strangers. I just have that outgoing personality. Of course, anybody uh, 
that sees you have some extra beer be like, yeah, come on, play with me. <laughs> but um, it was fun. It's a fun game. And like I said, I started to see improvement. So I'm hoping uh, that towards the end of last year, I started to see another uh, increase in the way I've been playing. I started to see improvement in the distance my ball was going. So I'm hoping that I can actually get to be a bogey player, which is not a bad place to be. My ultimate goal is to be a par player. That's everybody's goal. I've never hit a hole in one, so that still is uh, on my bucket list to, uh, to hit a hole in one. Someday we'll get there. See, now a lot of you guys use the sprayer. I use the mister because I know that uh, Shave326 had talked about it. Mr. G uses one, and when you depress the, the, the trigger um, or you set the set the mister off to, to miss the face or whatever you're doing. It like goes for a long time and it's a very heavy mist. It's not concentrated, which this does. Uh, but to each his own, I think it's a neat thing that the community is doing and uh, it works well. All right, third and final pass. I think we're pretty much Looking good here with the uh, the ladder. All right, let's give you some final tidbits of South Carolina as I unlock my tablet because it locked. Screensaver timed out. All right, in Aiken, South Carolina, there is a thoroughbred racing hall of fame and museum. Uh, so if you didn't know that, and if you're into thoroughbred racing, you can go to Aiken and visit. Uh, and there's also a major league uh, type of trivia question here. So there was uh, one individual in major league called Bill Vassell, who um, was the only player to ever wear the name of his hometown as the uniform number. So do you know those of you that are in South Carolina or America, anyway, the name of the town or the number that he wore. There is a place in South Carolina called 96, and that's the number that he wore on his uniform, being the only player to ever wear his hometown on his uniform. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then there's a ton of hot sauces if you're from Carolina. You like hot stuff? Uh, there's Carolina Sauce Company. There's the Palmetto Pepper Portions. And get this one, Pucker Butt. <laughs> Pucker Butt actually carries the famous Smoking Ed's Carolina Reaper, which has set the new Guinness World Record for hottest hot sauce in the world. So I know that Paul H., I know the DC Shaves, uh, a couple other folks out there talk about their curry and their spices. So when you ever get a chance, or if you ever have a chance, take a flyer on the uh, Carolina Reaper. <laughs> See if that's something that you can stand up to. All right, lastly, South Carolina is often known as the birthplace of sweet tea, which is not a uh, tea in, in a tea bag. It's actually a brewed tea, or it's uh, naturally mixed. In fact, all of the tea in South Carolina is sweet. If you go to a restaurant or anywhere, there is no option for unsweetened tea anywhere. Everything has been sweetened. So if you don't like sweet tea, bring your own. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. And that's all of the facts that I wanted to share with you guys in today's State Shave. Let's do the final pass. Going to go against the grain here on the cheeks. Yeah, this feels real slick. And I'm going to go slightly at an angle here, and this is my across the green. That 
lavender smell is just lingering. Oh, that's beautiful. That is. You know what? I wonder if it's because I did the Zoom Groom Challenge. There wasn't so much there. That a three-pass shave just gave me the VBS I needed. Concentrating here on the Adam's apple. Yep, a little bit there. All right, now let's go against the green on the cheeks. And we'll do nose to ear. Wow. Yeah, that is something else. Let's just shape around the goatee. Now it may not look even, but it is, it is even. There we go. All right, let's do a quick rinse. Put some cold water. Good residual slickness there. Lots of soap left behind. Got the old uh, beard brush soaking it up. In fact, just going to uh, There we go. Just wet the alum down. Face is already wet. Probably overkill with the toner, but what are you going to do? It smells nice. Got the products, right? Might as well use them. Ooh, close shave on the neck. I can feel it. Did I get myself there? Oh, looks like I nicked myself there. All right. Let me dry that off. Whoop! It didn't crack. Dropped it, but it didn't crack. Woo! Good. Okay. That'll sit there. Dry my hands off. Clean up in front of me a little bit. And then we'll just get this alum off. There we go. Oh. All right. Now let's hit it with some lavender tuner. Mmm. Beauty smelling. Beauty. Mm. There we go. Now, I'm going to put some Nivea for Men cream on. This is good stuff. It's Nivea. Little goes a long way. We're not doing anything special for Memorial Day. Technically, it'll be celebrating my last day of unemployment. <laughs> but, uh, 
we still have to keep distant. I'd love to have, you know, a get together with family, but my wife has a large family. Uh, there's just my mom and dad, and my mom just uh, needs to make sure that she stays safe. Uh, we really can't have her around a bunch of people. My dad is uh, looking at having some treatment done. A long, long time issue that he has had. Uh, hopefully that will be resolved without any further issues. Stemming from the procedures, but he needs to stay quarantined for now. So I guess everything is right in line with COVID. No burn, but beautifully smelling. And there we are. That is the State Shave of South Carolina. And I want to thank all of you for joining me and watching the video. Please give me a like, thumbs up if you'd enjoy it. And as Glenn Healy says, if you didn't like it, psh, thumbs down. <laughs> Leave me some comments. I'd love to read them. And I will speak to you in the next video. Subscriptions are always appreciated. Take care, and we'll speak to you soon.